bum bum. I can't do a cool intro because Warner Brothers will copyright start my butt. Hey guys, it's Riot Kitty, and welcome to another rendition of Who Did It Better, where I go over various adaptations and source materials to find out the important question of who did it better. The series has covered anime versus manga, anime versus anime, and now the big ahuna, live action versus live action, with Warner Bros. two different versions of a DCEU Justice League. I knew that as soon as the Snyder Cut was announced that I wanted to make this video. And now the time is finally here, so let's get right to it. So for those uninitiated, Warner Brothers' first ever attempt at a live action Justice League team-up movie essentially has two different versions. The first original version, sometimes crudely referred to as the Justice League, was released theatrically in November of 2017. Zack Snyder was originally supposed to direct this movie, like he did with Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman. Unfortunately, due to family tragedy, he understandably dipped out of the production, and Warner Brothers then brought in Joss Whedon to finish the movie. Fast forward a few years later, where it was announced that Zack Snyder would essentially be getting the opportunity for a do-over, with the announcement of Justice League The Snyder Cut, which certainly surprised me to say the least, since I thought that if a Snyder Cut did exist, it would just sit in a Warner Brothers vault for all eternity collecting dust. But I suppose that's what Matt fan advocacy can get you nowadays, and the backing of quite a few big name actors, and thus what is probably the most expensive director's cut ever made was released on March 18th, 2021 exclusively for HBO Max. Before I get started with all the comparisons, I just want to say I am perfectly aware of all the drama surrounding these two directors, as it pertains to the production of Justice League. However, it's confusing as all balls, so I'm going to be that guy from Bolt and put a pin in it. I'm just going to be focusing on comparing the two Justice League movies, how well they adapted the characters, and the directing style and not necessarily their character or conduct. I don't exactly lean into one camp or the other here. I have issues with both versions of the Justice League. So first up, I'll be going over the common problems. And oh boy, are there quite a few of those. First up is what I noticed immediately when comparing the two versions, their color and lighting. Both versions of the Justice League movie have the same but opposite problem in regards to this. The 2017 version seemed to want to have maximum saturation to perhaps give a more brighter and colorful feeling, while the 2021 version wanted to go the exact opposite on the saturation scale. See, Joss Whedon seemed to have this really odd saturated filter put on the movie. While I like bright and colorful, this filter made quite a few scenes look very, very ugly. It was certainly distracting to have the people look like oranges that have been sitting out in the sun too long. As for Zack Snyder, he went too far in the opposite direction. In quite a few scenes, I was squinting to try and make out the characters on my big screen TV. Batman getting the brunt of it being that he's wearing an all black suit. In a lot of his in-suit scenes, I can see a black silhouette attached to a talking mouth and not necessarily a person. Same with Martian Manhunter, who I was really excited to see in the Snyder Cut until I saw his scenes. Seriously, can I please see a clear image of this dude? So even though the Whedon Cut has this sickly saturation about it, I can at least give it props for making the characters visible. Just because a movie is dark and gritty does not mean it should be difficult to see the characters on the screen. And I know Zack Snyder has done better before, just look at 300. It's a pretty dark, gritty, and even more violent movie than Justice League. Yet the vibrant lighting makes the characters stick out and stand out from the background. Not forgetting about Joss Whedon either because he has also done better in the past than a sickly saturated filter slapped on a movie. So yeah, the lighting in both movies is pretty questionable in my opinion. The former has lighting that is too distracting and the latter has lighting that makes it hard to see the actual movie. This sort of segues into the second common issue I had with both versions, the designs of the characters. See, the Snyder Cut actually had new designs and some new outfits for existing characters. Case in point, the big bad of this movie, Steppenwolf. And if I'm to be perfectly honest, I think both designs are bad for completely different reasons. The 2017 version clearly needed more time to cook in the oven, having unfinished and rushed CGI with Uncanny Valley to boot. And that headpiece looks like I'm eating birds rotting carcass. Also, I don't know what it is about the clothes, but it looks cheap. While the 2021 Snyder Cut version sports infinitely better CGI, there are still a couple gripes I have with the design. This design is a distracting gray metal blob spikes everywhere, and there's nothing really attention-grabbing about it. It doesn't help that the spikes move randomly and frequently throughout his scenes, 
making the whole design even more distracting. And while the Snyder Cut Steppenwolf no longer sports Uncanny Valley, there almost feels like there's no point to it, as his face is almost entirely consumed by the armor he sports. However, the worst part about both is that they're poor adaptations. See, I knew Steppenwolf was Darkseid's uncle, but I didn't know what he actually looked like in the comics. So I looked him up and what I saw was a completely unrecognizable character from the two Justice League movies. Seriously, you would think I'm looking at a completely different character, but no. It looks like Steppenwolf is one of the more humanoid people on Apocalypse. Using this design would have definitely solved all of the CGI problems because it wouldn't cost as much to CGI a guy rather than create a whole different alien. And this design is certainly more colorful and stands out from the crowd more than either of the two designs combined. If Granny Goodness can still be human and look cool, then why can't Steppenwolf be human? Unfortunately, the black and gray blobbiness isn't exclusive to Steppenwolf. Black suit Superman, black blob, Martian Manhunter, black and gray blob, with tiny tints of red and green. Dark side, gray blob with red eyes. I would say cyborg if not for the fact he's shiny and those red lights coming out of him at all times. It's just a lot of grays and blacks and the ones who do have color get muted out by the lighting. So I suppose you could say that's my biggest gripe with the Snyderverse, visually speaking. And Joss Whedon quick fixing this by slapping a saturated filter on it only fixed one problem and created another. Not to say that I didn't like any designs whatsoever. Here are just a couple of examples. Although I wish this level of quality was extended to the rest of the Justice League designs. But unfortunately isn't, either because of a lack of color or just too much going on at once. There was also something else that bugged me while watching both versions. The unnecessary scenes, which isn't a good thing, especially for a superhero movie that's trying to do so much already. Both versions of the Justice League seem to have scenes that were awkwardly placed, went on for way too long. That had me looking at the clock wondering when the scene was going to end. I like looking at Jason Momoa's muscles as much as the next gal, but was it really necessary to have this extremely slow motion scene of him drinking and then going out to the harbor to take his shirt off to dive underwater? I'm certainly not against fan service by any means. Just have the fan service serve the story instead of pausing said story to have the fan service. The unnecessary scenes for the 2017 version come in the form of awkwardly paced scenes that just take you right out of the movie, either with poor CGI, poor directing, or just generally unfunny humor, pausing the story to interject humor when instead the humor should service the script. Now it's time to move on to the last and probably biggest issue both movies had which was unfortunately out of either creative team's control, which is a rushed cinematic universe. If you want my two cents, the whole DCEU was flawed from almost the very beginning. As Warner Brothers was trying to play catch up to Marvel, it already had a well-established cinematic universe by that point. I feel like this made Warner Brothers panic and want to rush things out the door to get to where Marvel is as quickly as possible. As before the Justice League, there were four DCEU movies. And since Suicide Squad didn't really do anything to help set up Justice League, there were really only three movies that set up three separate characters out of six superheroes. And that's not even considering all the other elements that were supposed to be set up and explained in this movie. Darkseid, Apocalypse, Steppenwolf, the Mother Boxes, the Atlanteans, the Martians, the Green Lanterns, etc, etc. I think even the best writers and directors in Hollywood would be scratching their heads as to how the heck they would cram all that into a single movie. To mitigate this, Aquaman and the Flash probably should have gotten their own standalone movies before Justice League. And then Cyborg would have been more focused on, as well as the other elements in Justice League. Now that I've gotten my issues out of the way with both versions of the Justice League movie, it is time for the comparing and contrasting. Now the stories of the movies, boiled down to the bare minimum, has the same basic general plot. Batman must assemble a team and resurrect Superman in order to stop an impending unknown alien threat and prevent the total annihilation of Earth. However, the key differences with the Snyder Cut that elevated a bit higher than the Whedon Cut is that, well, there is more context and build up. Stefan Wolf's character in the Snyder Cut was improved because there was more context as to what he was actually trying to do. As in the Whedon Cut, Darkseid and Apocalypse were never mentioned, only hinted to. So this made it appear that Stefan Wolf was trying to claim Earth for himself because of the mother boxes or some other vague entity. But in the Snyder Cut, it is made perfectly clear that Stefan Wolf is trying to terraform the Earth for Darkseid's conquest. And while I certainly preferred the theatrical version of his personality, 
functionality, Aquaman did indeed also benefit from the added context, making his story feel more complete and fleshed out, as the Snyder Cut added a few extra scenes where it was explained why Aquaman came back after initially rejecting Batman's call to arms, taking up his mother's trident to help save the day, and with more context came more buildup. As during this point of the movie, the rest of the Justice League was going to try and resurrect Superman at the Star Labs and defend Man's Mother Box from Steppenwolf. There was also this really sweet scene of Victor's father sacrificing himself for his son and to give away the Mother Box's locations. Although there was some unnecessary buildup in context, such as the scene with the domestic terrorists at the beginning of the movie, the audience didn't really need to know how they got in the building or took the school children hostage because that wasn't the point of the entire scene. The point of that scene was to show what Wonder Woman has been doing all this time since Batman vs Superman, spending so much time to focus on characters who are never relevant again for the entire movie just shows that this movie really didn't need to be four hours long. This kind of scenery where it takes too long to get to the point only serves as a detriment to the Snyder Cut, especially with the end of the movie, which did feel like the end, except it then kept on going. Like yet another long extended nightmare scene that continues to make no sense in the Snyderverse. I am of course referring to the scenes with Batman and others roaming around a dystopian Mad Max style wasteland, with a lot of parademons and an evil Superman. An alternate timeline deal in a superhero movie isn't a bad idea, but it needs to be woven cohesively into the narrative. As when these nightmare scenes happen, it's almost like two movies are playing simultaneously. It still muddles a story that's supposed to be told. And for me at least, it's still as confusing as it was in Batman vs Superman. It sort of reminds me of Injustice Gods Among Us, which also had a connecting dystopian storyline. However, the differences between this game and the Snyder Cut is that the alternate universe is actually connected. When Injustice Batman brings the normal Justice League over to his timeline to help stop Superman. In the Snyder Cut, the only real connection between the two universes or timelines or whatever is a very vague scene in Batman vs Superman. Otherwise, there is a clear disconnect between whatever is happening in the Snyder Cut and in the Snyderverse in general. So at the very least, I give the theatrical cut some props here, as there was only one continuing story, even with its briskly paced story. However, the Snyder Cut still has the far superior story, even with all my complaints about it. With the added context and build-up, the Snyder Cut feels more like the epic team-up movie that we were supposed to get. However, there's something just a tad off about the Snyder Cut's depiction of the Justice League, and it's the same but opposite problem as old Steppenwolf. While I give praise to the Snyder Cut for having more fleshed out arcs for each of the respective heroes, their depictions and personalities is what I take issue with. These versions of the characters are not the shining paragons of virtue I grew up with. The people who strive to be the best of humanity. The heroes that you could look up to and strive to be like them. The heroes who would always try to find hope in a hopeless situation and fight tooth and nail to the death. Unfortunately, the Snyder Cut version of the Justice League does not give me that impression. They remind me more of the Justice Lords or the Injustice League, where the Justice League have just given up on humanity and are gloomier and less hopeful. Everyone aside from the Flash is noticeably gloomier and more depressed, even though the story is about uniting Earth's greatest heroes against an impending alien threat, it just doesn't feel that way thanks to the tone. In fact, I think the solo Aquaman and Wonder Woman movies best embody what the Justice League is supposed to be. They are more so the optimistic superheroes who will save everyone, while still having some relatability. And they do a better job of balancing the light and the darkness of the DC universe. However, 80% of the time the Snyder Cut, it was all doom and gloom for the Justice League. As I stated before, the Wonder Woman movie best showcased her being a hero, her being an Amazon warrior who would fight for what's right. However, in the Snyder Cut, she almost lost the motivation to fight just because Stephen Wolf said some mean words to her about the Amazons. Superheroes who are supposed to save the Earth should not be that emotionally fragile. Which is why I looked to the weeding cut for the closest scene I would have liked of the Justice League. In the theatrical cut, the Justice League tracked down Stephen Wolf to a small remote town, and with the mother boxes he acquired, he started terraforming that town into his own personal base. If you know anything about Apocalypse and the Mother Boxes, that's pretty bad, as the people down there would either die or become parademons. So the Justice League teams up to save the people in the town and to storm the base. However, since the town is abandoned in the Snyder Cut, it doesn't really have that same triumphant, oh, they're finally working together and they're gonna save the day effect because all they're doing is fighting parademons and Steppenwolf. So honestly speaking, these versions of the Justice League 
didn't embody the heroes that they were supposed to portray. And never is that more the case than with Martian Manhunter, where he didn't do any super heroics, only ruined what I thought was a perfectly lovely conversation between Martha and Lois by impersonating Martha Kent, and telling Batman at the end of the movie that hey, you'll see him around. The only two I can confidently say accurately embodied their characters is Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor and Ezra Miller's Flash. Eisenberg's performance was greatly toned down from Batman vs Superman where he was more calm and less obviously erratic and crazy. And while Miller's performance still had a voice that was grating to the ears, I can still safely say that he did embody the Flash. The scene where he turns back time to save everyone from the terraforming is legitimately heartwarming. He goes on about telling his dad that he was one of the best of the best. So at the very least, at the end, he did truly embody what the Flash is all about. Even if it's just a more annoying version of Wally West with Barry Allen's ID. And I do mean that they're the only two. At least when it comes to superheroes and villains, since these versions of Superman and Batman aren't Superman and Batman still. From the media I saw before the Snyderverse, I thought it was kind of a big deal when Superman killed someone, or Batman killed someone, or used a gun. But I guess that just doesn't matter anymore since the entire Justice League can assist in cutting Steppenwolf's head off and it'd be no big deal. And Batman can roam around a Mad Max style wasteland with a bunch of comically sized guns. So yeah. Yeah, Snyder just really missed the mark with these two, and probably misunderstood why they are that way. Now that I've gotten all my misgivings of depictions of characters out of the way, it's time for me to try something new with this series. It's time for the summarization and tallying up of the points. For the final verdict, I'm just gonna use the year that these movies came out. First up, lighting. As I stated before, both have problems with their lighting. However, the 2017 version takes it. Because I can handle a few wonky colors if it means I can actually see what's happening the entire movie. Sorry, Snyder Cut, but you really need to turn up the brightness. Moving on to effects, well, the Snyder Cut takes it by miles. From a puffy-faced Henry Cavill who looks like he just got Botox to an uncanny valley and cheap-looking Steppenwolf, the 2017 version clearly needed more time to cook in the oven. Unfortunately, Warner Bros. just wanted to rush things out the door. However, it appears they at least learned their lesson as the 2021 version got more time, and thus, the effects were better. Hopefully the current and future management won't let another movie with such soddy effects be put to the big screen again. Moving on to the designs part, it was a bit hard to make my decision on this one, as both movies share a lot of similar designs. So I decided to think about whether or not the wonky coloring in the CGI would be enough to dox the point away from the 2017 version. The same thoughts were extended towards the Snyder Cut and its very gray palette, and and I also thought about whether or not the new designs in the 2021 version were enough to give it the point. But in the end, I couldn't decide, so I decided to make this a tie. Since most of the designs I do like are shared between the two versions, and the ones I don't, aren't. Unfortunately, the exclusive designs aren't enough to push one version up above the other. The exclusive designs really needed better costumes and better colors. Now for the most frustrating category to cover, the flow. This is in regards to the unnecessary scenery I was talking about earlier. Both movies immediately get docked the points I gave them the last category, because both movies are equally hampered by their unnecessary scenery, to the point where it disrupts the flow of the story. A lot. Different causes, same effects. Sorry to both 2017 and 2021. You guys really needed to tighten up your scripts more. As for the stories, while I do say the flow interrupts both stories erratically, I still have to give the point to the Snyder Cut, despite all my issues with its story. Since the added context and added scenes for characters made the story feel more complete and the characters feel more fleshed out. Speaking of which, characters is the next category. And this point also goes to the Snyder Cut. More complete character arcs leads to better characters. Who would have thunk it? Sorry to 2017, but you really need a longer runtime to better flesh these new superheroes out. Though the Rush Cinematic Universe certainly didn't help matters at all. Now for the last category in the final verdict. The depictions. This category would honestly not exist if not for the severe issue I took with the adaptations of the characters in one of the Justice League versions. This isn't necessarily about the writing, it's more so about the acting, how their personalities were depicted, how the characters carried themselves, 
so on and so forth. So without further delay, I give the final point to the 2017 version, since that depiction of the Justice League reminded me a lot more of the versions of the Justice League I grew up with. Their personalities were a bit livelier and deferred a bit more than in the Snyder Cut, where it almost seemed like each superhero was carrying the same gloomy and depressed personality, with the exception of the Flash. Sorry, 2021 Snyder Cut, but you really need a bit more balance between the light and the darkness, and have more distinctive personalities for each of your six main superheroes. Now, without further delay, here's the tallying up of the points. Drum roll, please! The Snyder Cut takes it on this edition of Who Did It Better, although not by much. With the 2017 version being a disappointment to say the least, I was really hoping that the Snyder Cut would actually pull through when give us a more definitive version of the Justice League. I'll admit I'm not the biggest fan of Snyder's work, especially not the Snyderverse and how he portrayed Batman and Superman. And I was still holding out a little bit of optimism, thinking that perhaps third time's the charm here. Unfortunately, it wasn't. And with the Warner Media Discovery merger, it looks like this rendition of the DCU is dead in the water. I could see Shazam 2 getting out there, Aquaman 2 definitely, maybe Black Adam and maybe The Flash. But other than that, I say that the DCU is probably going to be taken to the shooting gallery and given a nice reset a couple years down the line. And I can't help but think that this is probably for the best, as while I did like the solo DCU movies, this has been a poorly managed cinematic universe from almost the very beginning. Seriously, can someone please tell me why we got a Suicide Squad movie before a Justice League movie? Oh well, and thus concludes this edition of Who Did It Better? Do you agree or disagree with my takes on the Snyder Cut and the Whedon Cut? And most importantly, who do you think did it better? Let me know in the comments section below. And with that, Rye Kitty is signing out. <laughs>